Hi, I'm Carrie Frino. I teach drawing and sculpture and some advanced studio courses as well as CIE2 at Ursinus College and I am going to show you around my little studio. This is my studio. It is a rehabbed garage and we are walking into it. This is the space. And most of the time I am sitting in this chair uh, editing video on that computer, but also use this wall and the space to move the tables around for other projects like some sculptural projects and drawing projects. This is a portrait of my mom. Kind of see some of the features that are this way. It is resin and a plastic bag. I have some different kinds of molds over here. These are plastic, uh, plastic. These are plaster molds um, that I made of myself, my father, and my mother that I've used for some, um, mostly for noodle making. I've made these pasta masks of, um, of us. And then for like doing the resin casting, I ca this is a pretty dirty mold, but cast in this um, silicone life, life modeling product um, that is safe to put over a face and then um, you put kind of a plaster shell over it and then you can cast resin into it. This is a drawing that has been worked and reworked for probably like eight years, maybe longer. Just took it out again. This is another drawing that I have been working on more recently of um, one of Harry Harlow's, oops, Harry Harlow's um, monkey experiments where he was considering um, maternal attachment. So this is one of the baby monkeys with cloth mother. There was also a wire mother. This is the cloth mother version. This is the reference image that I was going off of. I started being really interested in this experiment and these images after I had a child and um, was thinking a lot about maternal attachment. Um, but then I realized through doing this drawing that I actually sort of see myself more as the monkey in this drawing than as the cloth mother. Okay, so here I am at my um, editing station um, where I'm working on putting some clips together from work from the past year, really. Um, I'm using four channels on this video and the song is a song that my sister wrote she's playing it in one of the channels and my grandmother is in one of the other squares 
so a lot of my work ends up being a sort of exploration into um, family relations and how they shape our view on the world and also how the idea of family relations and how we understand them change as we grow and mature um, through our own experience. So I use a lot of um, personal references and even actual members of my family in my work um, with their consent. An aspect of my thinking and process and conceptualizing of a work is absolutely digging into discomfort and the unknown and trying to um, make sense of it for myself and possibly create an interpretation of it for a viewer or for others. Um, I'm using a lot of personal references um, that are historical and sociological and more recently I have started thinking about my work from a perspective that acknowledges um, a certain amount of, of psychosis and mental illness um, in my own personal history and, and the family community where I came from. When I began doing video work, I was going into the woods by myself with a camera and recording interactions that I would have with the landscape and they were completely impulsive and intuitive. Um, I would spend some time finding something I wanted to interact with and then um, you know, set up a shot and make the video, but it was very much um, whatever I found on my hike that day. And, and as I processed and analyzed these works later, I realized that the trees or the environment, the ground, whatever it was, were really acting as stand-ins for other significant figures in my life. Um, specifically familial figures such as mother or father and I was sort of recreating these experiences that uh, I wish were true um, in this in this sort of like magical way almost thinking about them as like rituals as if like I did them in the forest alone in you know a, a specific way that um, somehow something would be true. And I'm, I'm pretty interested in that idea of magical thinking as well, and the sort of boundary, uh, which can be kind of fuzzy sometimes between reality and non-reality. A large part of the work does not happen in this studio also. Um, shooting video always happens, not always, but generally happens on location. Um, so out in the woods or near the place where I grew up in Northeastern Ohio, um, sometimes in the house, uh, but generally it's out of the studio and the studio is used more for brainstorming, editing, drawing, and other sort of um, sometimes like getting together an exhibition, other projects that I need um, just a dedicated space for. So ultimately in my work I'm taking these experiences that may have elicited fear or shame in the past and working to understand them visually in an interesting way and even maybe pull beauty from the experience.